Right, I think today's video might be rather short. I'm going to be taking a look at the recent 4K release of Sidney Pollack's 1993 film, The Firm. There's not really an awful lot to say, but keep watching to find out if this one is good, indifferent, or indeed recommended. The firm is based on a John Grisham novel of the same name. It's a thriller and features Tom Cruise playing a character who's just about to start out as a lawyer with a big firm and he's had an offer that seems too good to be true and he quickly finds out that it is indeed too good to be true. You'll have to watch the film to find out more but I really enjoyed it. My wife also really enjoyed it and we both really enjoyed it when it was in the cinema in 1993 and we haven't actually seen it since. So it's been a long time. I was tempted by the PAL laser disc when that was released, but because of the running length of this, which is two hours and 34 minutes, it went over two discs and therefore that laser disc sold for about 34 pounds. And I always thought, I didn't really think it was gonna be repeatable enough to invest that sort of money in a home video. This 4K is just £19.95. So you look at those two comparatively and you think all these years later, this truly is a bargain. It has an aspect ratio of 178 to 1 and it now comes with Dolby True HD 5.1 sound. Originally in cinemas it was Dolby stereo so that's matrix four channel surround sound stereo. There's nothing really sensational about the sound. You are able to fully concentrate on the story so no distractions from the sound completely suits the imagery and will vary from system to system but in here as usual we just had a wall of sound coming at us of very high quality. It had an estimated budget of $42 million and it took at the worldwide box office a gross of $270 million. So a huge success at the time and surely having Tom Cruise in the lead role surrounded by such a great supporting cast must have had a lot to do with it. It comes with Dolby Vision for those of you suitably equipped and HDR10. So possibly it will look better on your system or more impressive on your system than it did in ours. When I watch these 4K discs, I tend to judge them on how do they look compared to how the film prints would have looked when the films were in cinemas. And usually I'm gauging them because I've got quite a few 35 mil general release prints here. I'm gauging them in that regard. Do they look accurate to the general release print? And indeed, sometimes these 4K discs look so good, I tend to think that I'm almost looking at a master print. And if I had the noise of a 35 mil projector behind me, particularly with one that comes to mind, and that's the 4K release of Blade Runner, I really did feel with that, that had I have had the noise of a 35 mil projector playing behind me, I would have felt that I was looking at a 35 mil print. So they really are the ultimate, and it's incredible to me that home video has got this good. Now, I don't think the firm looked particularly brilliant when it was in cinemas. I did see it when it was on general release. That was a master print, but I have little recollection of how it looked. And I think that's because I was actually focusing on the story because it is quite convoluted and you do have to concentrate. So it's a 1.78 to one image and it does fill your field of view if you're projecting it to any size. So there's a lot to concentrate on, but because I was doing this for review, I was looking at how good does this look? And what I really noticed was that close-ups of faces. I know a lot of people out there that do reviews when they gauge their 4Ks, they talk about facial detail. Now, I don't think that's the right thing to look at, but I'm always looking at the entire frame and particularly where you've got the whole shot in focus and you can see people in the distance. And some films such as Tenet, which I'll get onto later, actually, I'm gonna mention something about that. But you can see someone in focus in the distance and you can actually see their face clearly. That is probably not the case on the firm, but that's not on what I'm referring to here. It's the close-ups. Quite a few of them appear to lack definition on our video projector, but then look fine on our telly. So you'll have to take a look and see what you think. But if you judge your 4Ks by facial detail, then this may not be the one for you. 
As I keep saying, all our equipment is different, and certainly in this case, the tele and video projector in this house did produce different results, and in particular, the grain structure. It really did look coarse on the telly at times, and never that coarse on the video projector, so it could be that that's causing this lack of definition at times. But did it spoil it for me? Not really, because I think this is a good film and it stands on its own on that basis. The colour is good, it's extremely accurate in places and not over enhanced like some of them are. You know, you get really vivid colours at times. That's not the case on this. It might be on yours with Dolby Vision, but it wasn't on here and indeed it looked completely natural. And for the most part, it had a nice film grain look to it. It seems to be smoother at the start of the film and then I started noticing it more later. And there are one or two two dark sequences which always exacerbates film grain where some people will think it's too coarse and something has gone wrong it hasn't that's just how it was filmed and how it ended up looking it might be slightly exacerbated through the scanning process but other than that I think this has a good filmic look to it there's no blu-ray in this pack it's just the 4k disc and there are no extras on that whatsoever so what people refer to as bare bones I quite like it that way sometimes I just want to watch a film enjoy it and then look back on the film but sometimes you think, particularly when I'm doing a review, I'd better watch all the extras. <laughs> and I've watched a lot of these making of documentaries over the years, and they all do get a bit samey. So it's nice when something comes along that's slightly different, even if in this case there's no extras whatsoever. But a good film, I don't think I can recommend to everyone because it's a good 4K disc, it's just not outstanding, and I don't think that's anything to do with the 4K process. I think that was how the film was shot, but it's a good film, and it's probably the best quality it's ever looked on the home market. So if you're like me, and you hadn't purchased this on any other format in the meantime, you'd only seen it on general release, I'd say the firm on 4K is to be recommended, but not if you like something special to look at. Now, in that regard, this is my original 4K disc of Tenet, which I think might be one of the greatest films ever made, just misunderstood, and you have to see it in its 1570mm IMAX format to really understand the grandeur and the ambition of this film, even if you have got little chance of understanding it. However, this disc has developed what I call the 4K fault, and it gets so far, probably a layer change, just start staggering, break up, and then freeze. So because HMV was selling off their first editions for a tenor, I thought I'll get one of those because it's got the little book in it, which is The Secrets of Tenet. And in fact, Keith at Euphoria Pictures has just done a very good review of Tenet with a new special edition, I think it's a film arena, and it's got this same booklet in it. Now, it's a nice little book, and Keith mentions how much he enjoyed reading about it, but in actual fact, that's a cut down of this. Now, you can get this off the web, I got this for £26, I think. It's a fabulous book, and it's actually got so much about Tenet in there and so many images. It's just a wonderful souvenir of the film. And so that's really why I'm not so partial to getting these special editions with these booklets in them, because usually if it's a film you love, you can get a full blown hardback or softback book. And so I thought I'd show you a few others that I purchased recently. And these all came from Forbidden Planet, these three. This is about the film Moon, which I think is a great independent sci-fi from Britain. And, um, £2.99 in Forbidden Planet, and I haven't finished reading this one all the way through yet, but it's just a marvellous book, and if you've got a Forbidden Planet near you, I would suggest rushing in there as quickly as you can to see if they've still got them at a bargain price. Another great film, science fiction film, oh no, it's not science fiction, it's actually science fact of recent years, is First Man, the story of Neil Armstrong, and here's the annotated screenplay. So not quite such an interesting book as it's based on the screenplay, but what a great book. And this was £4.99 in Forbidden Planet. So I think they've probably sold out of those now because they didn't have many. But there was a Jaws book I was looking for in there and it had gone, but anyway, I digress. This is another great book. I read about this at the time it came out a few years ago. Thought I must get a copy 
then forgot about it, never did, and I got this recently in Forbidden Planet for £9.99. So I think they've still got copies of this as I speak. So there you are, always worth looking in Forbidden Planet for these special deals that they do on movies. Now, I came out of HMV last week where I tried to get the John Wick 1 to 4 set and couldn't get it. So I've got the John Wick 4 and then a few others. So coming up soon might be a review of Creed 3, which they had the steel book behind the counter. So I had a look at it. That was fatal, wasn't it? And uh, another one that I wanted to see at the cinema, but everywhere I looked, it was just being video projected. I thought, what's the point? I'd rather watch it here. If that had been a film, I'd have been in there like a shot. The Fablemans. And another one I finally got on 4K is Inception, Christopher Nolan's Inception. Of course, this wasn't an IMAX film, but a lot of it, I think, was done in VistaVision, so it should still be excellent. I haven't seen that since it was first released on DVD, not when I saw it at the cinema. And at the time, you know, I didn't actually like it, so it'll be interesting to see if now I've got to grips with Tenet, I'll be able to get to grips with that. But a few other 4Ks and a Blu-ray or two I purchased recently, which... Few people have asked me to look at that, but it goes in the shell, but I thought I'd get the Blu-ray run, the 4K. That was two pound in a charity shop recently. <laughs> it's not bad, I think it's two pound in CEX actually. But in the same charity shop, the 4K of The Shape of Water, which was two pounds. So that one might be quite a bargain. Then on the other hand, I might not like the film, so it might not be such a bargain. I wouldn't have bought this normally, but it was 4K and two pounds again. So that one left the shop with me. And the town for two pound. So sometimes it pays to look in these charity shops. I did talk to them and say, look, you've priced these incorrectly, they're 4Ks. They didn't know what I was talking about, so I thought I'd just relieve them of them then. But also in that charity shop, just after I got my replacement copy of Tenet, they had the 4K of Tenet for £3.50 because it was a triple disc. So after a while I thought, I can't leave that there, can I? Because you can never have enough spares of Tenet. And indeed, that Keith at Euphoria Pictures video has tempted me to look for that steel book. And you know, I was in CEX a few days ago and they had a steel book of Tenet for £8. But maybe I should have got it. But then it becomes an obsession, doesn't it? You can only take these things so far. I've got the book. I've seen the film in 1570 IMAX and I've got two decent copies of it on 4K. What more do you need? Yep, should have got that steel book. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and perhaps consider subscribing so I'll be encouraged to carry on creating content like this. Until the next video, bye-bye for now.